be the change you wish to see in the world. Mohandas Karimchand Gandhi was simply a man. In fact, I told you. Okay, great. In fact, <laughs> this man, <laughs> weighing a mere five foot three, weighing only one hundred pounds. However, through great determination and commitment, he became one of the most important and noteworthy men in civil rights history. It's hard not to be able to find inspiration from Gandhi, a man who sacrificed his wealth, his well-being, his livelihood, and his entire life for the good of others. Gandhi, a single man, changed the world. And this is why Gandhi, Mohandas Karimchand Gandhi, a man, a leader, an illuminator of an otherwise dark time, deserves a spot in the World Hall of Fame. On October 2nd, 1869, Gandhi was born in Porbandar, India, to a wealthy family. He was raised by a family of devout Jains. It's an Indian religion, much like Buddhism. And it instilled in him the values of compassion and tolerance for people of all creeds. Through his reading as a young boy, he furthered these values with the Indian epics, as well as instilling in him truth and love as the paramount values of life. At the age of 13, Gandhi was married in an arranged marriage. Two years later, his first child was born, dying shortly after. That same year, his father died. Five years after that, Gandhi went to college at University College in London. Um, he was studying to become a lawyer, even though he didn't really want to. And it was at London that he first got into Hinduism and Christianity, which would help uh, support his later spiritual values. After college, Gandhi returned to India to, be, to set up a law firm. However, he failed, and in every subsequent attempt to work, he failed. Finally, he took up a post in South Africa. And it was here in South Africa that he first started his civil rights work. There you go. And uh, both blacks and both black South Africans and Indians were heavily discriminated in South Africa. For instance, while on a train at one point, he was thrown off for refusing to move from third class from first class to third class, despite having a first class ticket. This caused them to both question the Brit the rule of the British Empire and brought about his later civil rights work. In 1894, Gandhi started the Natal Indian Congress, which, created, which brought the Indian population in South Africa to a homogenous political force. However, many were angry at this, and in 1897, an angry mob attacked Gandhi, nearly killing him. However, he did not seek political redress because he did not seek, he did not believe in redress, redress for personal wrongs. If this had happened to another, he would certainly have sought justice to no end. However, he did not see that it was necessary to take up the state's time and resources for his own needs. During the Second Boer War, Gandhi, uh, Gandhi created a 1,100 strong ambulance corps, and it was one of the few that would treat wounded black South Africans. Later in 1906, the, northern, the northernmost colony of South Africa, the Transvaal colony, required India, passed a law requiring Indians to register with the government. Gandhi, for the first time, started nonviolent protest and had the law reversed, despite the cost, for people were being flogged, shot, or jailed. In 1915, he returned to India to find his mother had died and joined the struggle for Indian independence. He led impoverished farmers in Champaran and Kedah who were being forced to grow cash crops instead of food by a British tax. Through, again, nonviolent protest, they had this tax reversed and the quality of life instantly rose. At the beginning of World War II, the British called on Indians to fight for their cause. However, 
Gandhi declared that Indians would not fight for democratic freedoms that were not allowed to them. And later in 1942, he escalated this with the Quit India Movement. Essentially, yes, he quit India, basically slapping the British Empire across the face. There was jail and bloodshed. However, ultimately, the, Br the Indians got their independence. Until his death, Gandhi led people against oppression, despite the impact he, it had on himself. He was born wealthy and powerful, yet he always sought the good of others. Unlike most countries, he led his own to independence without war. The lasting effect he had was enormous. The majority of all civil rights leaders were inspired by Gandhi. Thus, his impact is simply unfathomable. That is why Gandhi, Mohandas Karimchand Gandhi, deserves a spot in the World Hall of Fame. Thank <laughs> you.